everyone. Kill that urge to be chosen. Choose yourself. I'm back. Hi guys. Oh my gosh, it's been a really long time. I know, I know. Life has been lifey. But we're back, we're back, we're back. And today, as of the recording date, it is January 30th. So... <laughs> So I'm somewhat on time to give you a recap of my reads last year, my top reads last year. It was the first video I ever did when I talked about my top 10 reads and I'm going to put it in the title but it's really 14 because I can't choose and 14 is my lucky number. So that's what we're going to do. I got everything on my iPad. I'm such an iPad kid. I don't know if y'all are iPad kids but I had an iPad as a kid and then I didn't have one for like I don't know maybe like a decade or something. I don't know. I didn't have one like through like middle school to high school and then like my junior year of college, I was like, I think I need an iPad. And ever since then, I'm on my second one. This might be a long one, so grab a snack, grab a drink, sit down. I wish I had a little sippy sip, but you know, we're, we're, we're gonna be, we're gonna be okay today. But we are gonna have some fun today. Um, And just talk about my top 10 favorite reads. I do have some books here that I'm probably gonna use for like a thumbnail because none of these books are my top 10 favorite reads. One is a runner up though, but it's like a new print, so. Okay, so I have the list pulled up. I don't have it in a specific order just because I really couldn't choose a favorite this year, but I will end the video off with like my favorite, favorite, favorites of the year. And so I'll start the video off with my, um, my runner-ups, okay? Because the runner-ups are important. The runner-ups are important. And I do have some of these books physically. I'm just a little lazy luck vibes. I can't get up and be running around vibes. We're just gonna keep it on the screen somewhere and we're gonna have fun so these are the honorable mentions i'm not gonna go too much into them just because i don't want this video to take 27,000 years because one thing about me i can chat okay you podcast girlies if you need someone to talk I i'm your winner because i can't just like there's something about my mouth that just wants to keep running and keep going um anyways i have four honorable mentions this year or last year and they're great reads so i definitely recommend getting up and reading them i'm gonna tell you a little bit about them um and i'm just gonna say them now so Love Redesign by Lauren Asher, Heartless by Elsie Silver, Only for the Week by Natasha Bishop, and Team Players by Deanna Gray. Now, I actually don't own two of these on the list, but I'm gonna get them. I want the discreet covers for like half of these, and I have the OG Elsie Silver redesigns before Boone picked them up, and I didn't know they were going for so much. Like, my friend sold hers, and someone like messaged her and was like, you know you undersold that, right? Like, those go for like 150 to 200 now. For a book? One? I, all I know is that I'm saving one of my arcs to like fund my child's I am not um, a college. Mother yet. Like, <laughs> I'm actually two. Love Redesign is basically about these childhood frenemies to lovers. It is the first book in Lauren Asher's new series, Lake Wisteria series. I forgot exactly what it's called, but basically there are a bun bunch of like architects and like big boss, like just basically the HGTV channel, literally, and then romance which I think is, it's, it's a wet dream, <laughs> come on. Lauren Asher has the ability of writing some of my favorite people on this earth. And Julian Lopez is my second favorite man she has ever written. He literally goes toe to toe with my baby Santi Aletore, but he, he ain't beat it. He ain't beat it, he, he is there though. It's something about her purple books, like her purple books just have a certain je ne sais quoi. I said je ne sais quoi, je ne sais quoi. Also, all these books obviously have five stars because I have no self-control and I give five stars out based on my feeling. Like, the book could really be trash and I'd still give five stars if I had a good time reading it. <laughs> Sorry, but I don't read trash books. I don't know about y'all, but I don't read trash books. I don't know how people be rating books one star. Just be, just drop the book. Like, how do you read a one star book all the way through? Y'all have some determination. Every time I see that one star, I'll be like, how'd you finish it? <laughs> what? Heartless by Elsie Silver? Which one is Heartless? I think it's the second one. I'm sorry, I get her books mixed up. I think it's the second one, it's Kate and Willa and I really like that book, so that's probably Heartless. But anyways, um, this one is basically, it's the nanny trope. It's the single dad and nanny trope. What more do I gotta say? And the female main character is literally one of the strongest female main characters I read of the whole year. And I love a strong female character. Don't let nobody dog walk you. I have this one video, I don't know where I'll put it up, but I'll put it up and I'll do the facial reactions with it. She ain't no diva. Stand up. I hate when a female character can't stand up. I'm not just a female character. I hate when a main character can't stand up for themselves. Like, girl, boy, they them. 
get up. Anyways, Only for the Week by Natasha Bishop. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something about black love. It's in me, yeah, yeah. I love it, I love it. And this is like a vacation little read. Like, you're gonna have a lot of fun with this one, I tell you that one. Like, it has so much drama. It has this one scene where they're on a yacht because yeah, he rented out a yacht for her so she could have a day of peace and read. And then she told him about her, the book she was reading. He's actively listening to what she's saying, right? Then he gets the book himself and starts reading it. Get out of my face. Get out of my face. The last book obviously is Teen Players by Deanna Gray. I love this one. I love this one down. And not enough people talk about the book, okay? This is a hockey romance. Both captains of the hockey team. Obviously there's a female hockey team and a male hockey team. And it's just good because it's friends with benefits to lovers. And not a lot of people can do friends with benefits to lovers, but the people who can do it, <laughs> They gonna get my cookie every single time. Like it's something about that trope that is just like imagine thinking like, oh no, like this is just to itch a scratch, this that and the third. But they like wait, I kind of like this person, and then they uh, 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 boom. Now y'all both in love. You how do you accidentally fall in love? Like uh, stupid. I love it. On to my top ten list. My top ten list. My top ten list. On to my top tens. I'm going to start it off with. Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. Now, I'm not going to talk about this too much because of the SMP um, boycott, but this did make my list. And that's all I'm going to say on that one. But Wash Day Diaries by Jamila Rouser. Rouser? I hope I'm saying that right. I mean, this is how you spell it. So I hope I'm saying that right. But this is a graphic novel. It is so good. We basically follow the lives of four black girls in their adulthood. They're all friends. And they basically chat in with each other. Obviously, because of the name, it's the Wash Day Diary. So we get to see different wash days and mixed in with their hair routine and just their daily life of how they got their hair done. You get a little bit of tea on their lives. And I just wish that like this could easily be the plot of like a great HBO Max TV show. I'm getting Issa Rae insecure. Like I'm getting, I'm getting black friend groups. Like girlfriends, like give me something, give me something. And that gave it everything. And the illustrations in the book are so phenomenal. Like I'm a big graphic novel girly. I know not a lot of people read graphic novels, at least not in the romance world. And honestly, a lot of romance books could be turned into graphic novels. And I think they do so well because people love illustrations. Like that's why fan art does so well. So imagine if you turn your mega pop, like imagine Beach Read. As a graphic novel i'd sit down and read it i'd sit down to read it i i think that this could be something if y'all want to have that conversation you know what my email is okay i changed the camera angle and i cannot see it because i film on my phone if you guys did not know and so if you can see my cheetah print pants shh, like i'm talking pll title <laughs> You know anyways <laughs> um i think we talked about two books on the list so far and i can't wait to talk about my next one <laughs> okay so the next book on my list is definitely the devil you know by elizabeth o'rourke the title really doesn't have much to do with the book but this is the best friends with benefits to lovers book I've ever read in my entire life of living okay and if you do pick it up I recommend the audiobook I know I know some people are not audiobook girlies but gosh dang it give it a chance stop it do you know what getting the library card could do for you I know somebody who hasn't paid for wi-fi for three years because of the library you better utilize that library and get your library card anyways if you do have the devil you know on your library um an audible like get Libby or like hoopla um i definitely recommend listening to it because there's something about that book the connection between the two characters is crazy like their chemistry i i am a banter enthusiast i quite literally have a shirt that says emily henry banter enthusiast like i'm gonna put it somewhere here on the screen and i i that's what i thrive off of like i love banter in real life i love banter in all the media i consume that's why people become ship warriors because the ship they ship has amazing banter and this book literally like i mean seals the deal the banter between the two characters is crazy because at first they like have this type of like and mind you this is like workplace by the way this is a workplace romance so they have this type of like go for the jugular type of romance and then or type of connection but then it like heats up and just the way they are with each other is sick it's sick it's sick it's sick it's sick oh my gosh i don't want to there's this big plot point where basically like i don't want to spoil it because this is like a big thing but let's just say she has a pinterest 
and her on her boards like it's like aesthetic things for the home and he has a home <laughs> anyways on to my next read it's definitely gonna have to be before i like go by kennedy ryan i actually have a book club with kennedy ryan right now on fable um shameless plug and we are giving away a hundred a hundred copies of before i let go and guess what kennedy actually annotated the book like if you go an app and you get the book she her annotations are in there like i think authors need to do that more because i was in barnes and noble the other day and i've never read archer's voice voice I've actually never read a Mia Sheridan book, but I saw this beautiful, I mean, sprayed edges, like foiled cover, annotated book by the author, Barnes & Noble edition. And I was like, like, imagine if I walked in there and saw From Luca With Love like that, Restore Me by J.L. Sneakers like that. I would literally, I mean, y'all owe my wallet. <laughs> sorry, sorry, like you owe my wallet. Anyways, Before I Let Go is basically a marriage in crisis, except they're divorced. They're already divorced. Um, but they have to navigate this world. There's some feelings that weren't completely communicated. They got kids. It's like they try to move on, but you can't move on. And there's this one line in the book where the main male character whom you are gonna despise. Like I hated him up until 60% into the book. One thing about Kennedy Ryan, let me say this right here. One thing about Kennedy Ryan is she can write a character you despise. She just has a knack for it. And she'll be like, you know, I don't think every character is bad. They have every There's some bad characters and you write them to, to the T. Like I'm getting triggered reading this book and, and that's not even what was listed in the triggers. Gosh, anyways, there's a part in the book where the main male character says if you're if you're waiting for the day that i get over blah 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 then you're gonna be waiting forever <laughs> <sighs> gut me i'm gutted that book was phenomenal oh my gosh next book i have is highly suspicious and unfairly cute by talia hibbert this is a high school romance it is childhood best friends to enemies to lovers which i don't normally like i don't think it's usually done well like the best ones that i've read are ya books because a lot of people don't give ya books their cookies like ya books are some of the best books i've ever read like if i give a top 10 list of my favorite books at least half of them are ya this one is really really good it's another black love romance and they're both smart kids so think about like valedictorian salutatorian level smart and they the way that they are with each other i don't remember it too vividly just because it has been like literally a year since i read it because i mean i read it in january of 2023 um but i just vividly remember the connection between the two characters was just something that i uh, it was so good and i just love the way that she would be in, not insecure in her appearance but people wouldn't she wasn't like the the way she would dress isn't like universally accepted, I would say, and not even like accepted. Like she just be walks the beat of her own drum and he's there for it. And other people would be like, she's so old. Like I can't believe she's doing that. And he'd be like, she's kind of awesome. Like, I love that she's doing that. And I'd be like, <laughs> love it, love it real bad. It was so good, so good. Next book on the list, Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Let me tell y'all something about Abby Jimenez. I actually got to meet her this year. This book is one of the most gut-wrenching. I mean, I was dry heaving, sobbing reading it. And not even because I should have been, but because of the emotions conveyed in the situations with the characters. Like there's so many parts of the book where you're just like, you know when you're reading a book and you're like, and let me do an example, by the way, this is Next of Kin by Hannah Bodum Young, which is one of my favorite books of the year, I think. Oh, it's not even on the list. It should be. This book is phenomenal. Imagine you're reading a book, right? This is gonna be one of my favorite books of the year. That's how you feel reading that book. That's how you feel. Because it's one of your favorite books of the year. It's so good. Um, basically we have, I think it is fake dating. We have a fake dating relationship between Jacob and Brianna and Brianna is the best friend of the main character from part of your world so they're interconnected standalones um and it's just I mean oh gosh oh my gosh it's just done so well Abby Jimenez is oh goodness I love her I love her it's so pure and tender Jacob has anxiety 
And I love reading about diversity and a lot of people think reading diversely only boils down to race and I think that's kind of an obtuse way of looking at it. I've had arguments about this before, trust and believe. Like yes I do. If you read about just race and you're reading only about like straight people but like um, the range of races, what happened to reading about queer romances? What happened to reading about disabilities or like mental, like everything that you could read is there for you. So I just feel like gotta read diversely anyways in this book it has anxiety rep done phenomenally like phenomenally I have anxiety um but reading it in that form was just something that was so like it really helps you empathize because you never know what people are going through a lot of invisible illnesses people um are so quick to judge because you can't see it but that right there i mean that was done so well i don't even want to spoil it because it the first time reading it is going to be something sweet and so i definitely recommend that book with everything in me the next book on my list is nothing more to tell by karen mcmanus i am a murder mystery romance girl and i think that's what my next youtube video is going to be on because not enough people talk about it and i'm here for that murder mystery romance is my favorite genre of all time literally my favorite genre of all time and nothing more to tell is quite literally my favorite one this one is not marketed as a romance nor it should it be i really like when the romance is like budding in the story like it's not the main focal point of the story but it's so prevalent like it's prevalent like something's there like a little glance a touch that lingers a little too long a beat that lasts longer than comfortable you know that type of you know you know and that's what nothing more to tell is so basically these three kids in school now this is like in the past i can't remember if it's like four or five years before like in the prologue type thing these kids are found with the body of one of their teachers in school and none of them are even put on trial none of them like all of them are found guilty and the teacher passed like you know he's literally there and so fast forward a couple years the main character used to be friends with one of the people who was in well, who was found on the body she leaves that school she ends up having to come back and she's like a big journalist type girl like she wants to report crime and she wants to become like a reporter type person and so she gets this internship at this place right when she starts at her new school and she's investigating the case of that teacher because that teacher happened to be one of her favorite teachers and so we kind of delve on from there but the person that she used to be really close with there could have been a romance there but something happened where it was immediate enemies so i think this one is childhood friends to enemies to lovers um and i think it's done really well within the story of the genuine murder i am somebody who guesses plots pretty easily i think i've watched enough criminal minds in my life to sustain the entire my entire family like i've, I've watched it okay um and so i'm really quick at guessing like little lingers or like a little glance and when i tell you there's layers to it so you might have guessed the first one but you didn't guess the second or third one you might have guessed the second one but you didn't guess the first or third one it's so good it's so good oh my gosh and the audiobook just takes you on a story like if you can't tell audiobooks were my 2023 like i read a good chunk of physical books i read physical books i read a good chunk of ebooks and then i listened to a majority of my books last year we get into the good 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 i mean these are great I actually really love the ones I said. I don't know why I said I saved some of my favorites for the end because I'm talking a lot. Anyways, Out on a Limb by Hannah Photom Young. This is an accidental pregnancy book and stick right there. I know a lot of people don't like accidental pregnancy, but that is one of my favorite book tropes because I just think it adds to the chaos. Like my umbrella trope is forced proximity and under forced proximity, I so many things that fit under forced proximity and accidental pregnancy is one of them because immediately they find out, obviously, they're like, I want to be in the, in the child's life to stand the third good amazing this one is also um disability rep and it's so good it's done so well oh my gosh and it mostly focuses on the connection between the two main characters and their friends um and oh my gosh i mean oh my gosh miss hannah she actually wrote these ones next to you and next to kid which is just these books are so good but anyways her writing is very poetic to me it's it's something special to me i can't even really speak too much on this book but <sighs> it's a grounding it's a very grounded book if you guys like grounded fiction contemporary romance that's your woman because her books always eat and her comedy like the banter first of all the banter in the books are phenomenal um specifically out on a limb but she's something very special to me that woman mm-hmm mm-hmm
three more books on the list so i'm really excited to get to them my next book i'm talking about is check and mate by ali hazelwood another ya book and it is her debut ya book and for this being her debut ya book i mean she's sick she is sick that is one of the best YA romances I've ever read in my entire life. It's based around these two characters. Oh, someone gave it one star. When somebody gives one of my favorites one star, it's just like, you never get the song like that this song I got. Like song. I like you don't get it. Nolan and Mallory and Nolan is like this infamous world-class world famous chess player he's been since he was a kid his grandpa was really big in it and that's just chess has been his whole life and then we have Mallory who her dad was really big in it something happened she does not play chess anymore she does not associate it she doesn't even want to think about it but it's addictive because she is very good so she gets roped into doing this chess tournament right and she ends up beating Nolan and that catches everyone up right they're like what, the, what like he's been beat maybe like twice in his life he's like 17. and so we kind of go from there where she wants nothing to do with the chess, chess world but she keeps being pulled back in and we have nolan this stoic broody boy of, like he's obsessed with her he's just quite frankly put he's obsessed with her and she's like she's so aloof like she'd be like oh my gosh he lingered his gaze lingered on me he might be the reason why i'm here but i don't really i don't really think he likes me even as a person like they can't even fathom that he, like he probably really hates me yeah that's why he makes his way to have a conversation with you every day like put two and three together and get five please please anyways their romance is so good because he is such like a closed off like to himself type character and she's not like really forthcoming either but when they're together their chemistry and one thing about Ali Hazelwood is that this year, or 2023 was really her year. Maybe she'll up it up with 2024 because I'm about to finish Bride. I got on audio. Bride is crazy. It's a vampire werewolf romance. More to Twilight. And Ali Hazelwood, I think she really proves herself because I don't know if y'all are fan fiction readers. I am still a fan fiction reader and I've been reading fan fiction since I was like 14, maybe 13. When I tell you, you can tell that her roots are fan fiction because her writing is like, and she's not American. And let me tell y'all something about the like foreign writers. I'm foreign too, but I was born and raised in the States. Anyways, what about foreign writers, especially if English isn't their first language? I don't know if that's Ali Hazelwood's first language, but I'm just saying in general, if English isn't their first language, you're about to read the best book you've ever read in your entire life. If you know, you know, like it's, it's just that, like it's crazy, but you can tell Ali Hazelwood. Also, she's Italian, which I think is really cool. Um, but anyways, you could tell in her writing that she comes from fan fiction because she is phenomenal. Like she's just she, she just keeps getting better. Like I don't ah like one thing about me, I'm not a big like vampire werewolf fae. Like that's not me. Like if I'm reading a book and they have a tale, I'm closing the book. But she really engulfed me in this book. Like I'm like oh my gosh, wait, like wait, wait, no way. And I'm talking about Bride. I'm not even talking about the book. But check and mate is so good, guys. It's so good. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so good. Like, they're both like black cats, in my opinion. Like, I know people are like, black cat, grumpy sunshine, golden retriever. They're both people who don't like other people. Like, what more can you say? But they like each other. They like each other. So the next book I'm going to talk about is Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. This book. <laughs> Wrap it up. Give her her flowers. If I could write her next advance, I would. I want to sign that check. I want her to know that I approve of her so much and I want to invest in the next one. Because this book is crazy. Okay, so we have um a florist, like a tatted up male, like 6'5 florist, grumpy, he don't talk to nobody, he had to take over his dad's floral shop because his dad just passed away. And then we have a wedding planner who, get this, doesn't believe in love. She don't believe in love at all. Because her mom has been married like nine times. I kid you not. Nine times. And so she's been raised in like in this era where she's like love doesn't exist. Like I'm not like there's there's nothing like mm -mm. like it's all about physical. You might have a little infatuation and you keep pushing. And then we have this like you know those um, t old Tumblr tropes that was like looks like a cinnamon roll could actually kill you. Looks like he could kill you. Could actually kill. You. He looks. He could. He looks like he could kill you. But he's actually semi real. Um, their connection is really good. I would call them. I would say it's friends with benefits lovers. But let me tell you what's different about it. It's in um. It's in past present timelines. And I usually don't like past present timelines. And I'm, I'm gonna be honest. When I first started a book, it did throw me off. Like I was like, ah, uh -uh, like okay. But when you get into the book, you're like, wait, no, because I want to know more about the past to let the what led to this. Like what led to the way y'all are acting right now. And it's so good, guys. It's so good. There's this one line. Actually, I can't say that one. That one is rated R. 
my gosh. But it's good. It's good. It's not like crazy. It's not like raunchy, you know. But it's it was a little raunchy. But it's fun. It's fun. Okay, guys, it's fun. Anyways, he's like tatted up with flowers. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned that. But like, he works in a floral shop. Every one of his tattoos are like plants and flowers. And her name is Ama, and she has like um like a flower that like co correlates with her name. He might have it tatted on his body. He might have got it after meeting her. I actually can't remember if it was before or after, but you're gonna have to read to find out. You're gonna have to read to find out. And the last book in my top 10 reads of the year, Seven Year Slip by Ali Ashley Poston. Why did I say Ali? I'm thinking Hazelwood, I'm in that. Anyways, this book guys, I mean, I was like dry heaving sobbing for at least like 20% of the book, like at least three, like periodically, like throughout the book. Oh gosh. It's a book about love. There's time jumps. I really can't spoil it. Like I can't talk about the book without spoiling it. That one I know I can't do. But there, there might be some time jumps. Cause look at the title. Seven Year Slip. It's it touches on grief. So if you are grieving or you had grieved, I mean grief is just it's a forever process. I went through a lot of grief last year, and it's just it's still like. So yeah, I think with so much of that fresh on your mind, reading that book is a little heavy. It's a little heavy, I will say that, but it's so good. And that's all I'm gonna say. It is a, it's a five star read every time. I mean, you can watch reviews if you'd like, but I don't wanna spoil it because it's that good. It needs to be read with fresh eyes and it's done amazingly. And I also have quotes up on my um, Instagram if you guys wanna check it. And you guys want to check it out. Oh my gosh, that's it. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had fun. What the heck? I had fun. I love talking about my favorites. Um, and I will see you hopefully soon. I'm I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to establish routines, guys. I'm trying to establish routines. Yeah. If you guys have any video recommendations that you want to see from me, make sure to comment those down below because they really, really help me, like genuinely. Check out my socials. Um, no, but you have a good rest of your day. Probably when you're not looking, you'll find someone who reads the same books.